governo americano tenta impedir a publicação de resultados de uma nova pesquisa sobre a gripe aviária. Cientistas criaram uma versão ainda mais letal do vírus. O alerta surgiu no mesmo dia em que milhares de frangos contaminados foram abatidos em Hong Kong. Exames confirmaram a contaminação de uma carcaça de frango. Foi o bastante para que o governo de Hong Kong determinasse o abate de 17 mil animais. A carcaça infectada foi recolhida num conhecido mercado local. O governo chinês ainda tenta descobrir se o frango veio de uma fazenda próxima ou se foi importado e de que país. Hong Kong foi o centro da primeira contaminação de gripe aviária entre seres humanos em 97. Agora cientistas da Holanda e daqui dos Estados Unidos acabam de anunciar a criação em laboratório de uma versão mais letal do H5N1. O novo vírus tem uma capacidade ainda maior de se alastrar entre nós, seres humanos. O estudo buscava novas formas de prevenção e tratamento, mas acabou gerando um problema para o governo americano. Os pesquisadores usaram animais como este, o furão, para provocar uma mutação genética do vírus. Pela primeira vez na história, duas das principais revistas científicas do mundo foram orientadas a não revelar detalhes da pesquisa, que vai ser publicada em breve. As autoridades alegam que não se trata de censura, apenas temem que a descoberta caia nas mãos de terroristas. First of all, why would anyone want to create something like this? Scientists have been puzzled why uh, H5N1 bird flu hasn't kind of made that leap into the human population. Over the last five years, they've been tracking it carefully, and they know that it, uh, that it kills 60% of the humans that it infects, but it doesn't spread from person to person. It only spreads from birds to humans. Now, what these Dutch scientists have done is, is look at the mutations, the key changes in the DNA of, of the, or the RNA, the, uh, the uh, genetic material of the, of the virus, and find out what it needs to do to make that leap, to spread in the normal way of flu from person to person through coughs and sneezes. And they know, they know that it's just five changes in ah. two genes, and that's all it needs. So there was a, a pure scientific reason for doing this research to prove that H5N1 could do this naturally, But of course, they needed to speed that up and do it in the lab. Okay, but also, does that help? Then that's getting one step ahead of nature that's in, the idea. in terms of prevention and it cures. It could pr produce a vaccine or maybe uh, drugs further down the line, so that they're prepared. Should the virus naturally do this, they would be able to to keep one step ahead. But of course, there is this this double effect by showing that it's possible, you're also giving the, perhaps the hint to bioterrorists who might uh, want to, to use this virus to, uh, to kill thousands, possibly even millions of people. development on bioterrorism to tell you about. Researchers in Wisconsin and the Netherlands working separately have created a form of the deadly bird flu virus that can easily spread from person to person. There is growing concern that if terrorists got their hands on this information, they could create a virus that could kill millions of people around the world. The bird flu virus, known as H5N1, is fatal in 60% of human cases. Since it was first detected back in 1997, about 600 people have been sickened by it. Of those, only 336 have died, mainly because it cannot yet be transmitted between humans. 
In response to the new research, the government's National Science Advisory Board for Biosecurity, for the very first time, has asked the journal Science and Nature to withhold certain details of the new research from reports they intend to publish. Joining us to talk much more about this is Dr. Michael Osterholm. He's the director of the Center for Infectious Disease Research. And he's also a member of the National Science Advisory Board. Dr. Osterholm, nice to have you on the program. What do you know about this new research? I mean, how significant of a discovery do you think this is? Uh, basically, the efforts were really to see if the H5N1 or bird flu viruses, which to date have not transmitted readily from person to person, as you noted, could actually go through a series of genetic changes that would actually make them capable of doing that and really becoming the next pandemic influenza strain. And what the authors were able to do in the two uh, papers that are now being considered did demonstrate changes that could very well mean that the virus could become readily transmitted between humans. So what do you say to critics who, who, who are saying that this is, in a sense, censorship, telling the, these journals that you can't publish this information, these findings? Well, first of all, we all agree that kind of the ultimate original sin of scientific research is censorship. But we also understand that there is a way to move very critical information to those in the scientific world that have a need to know without informing the entire world. Uh, and what I mean by the entire world, particularly those individuals who may, for nefarious reasons, want to try to duplicate this work uh, and that virus somehow get into the population. And, and I would um, really be mindful here that it's not just terrorists we think of. Even someone working with the virus in a laboratory where they are not sufficiently careful to keep it from escaping uh, could very well be the reason why this could start another worldwide pandemic. So the efforts we really have undertaken is to try to find that right middle point. How do we make sure that the right information is moved to the people of a need to know, but that it's not in the hands of those who could use it for uh, unfortunate purposes? Do you have any, any thought that maybe this research shouldn't have been done in the first place? Any regrets? Well, first of all, I think this research is very important for several reasons. One is, is that until now, there were a lot of people who doubted that H5N1 or the bird flu virus would ever become a pandemic influenza strain, meaning that that circulates around the world among a largely uh, unprotected population and causing great damage. Now we have no doubt. The changes that we know about that have allowed this virus to become more readily transmitted among ferrets, an animal model that really approximates what happens in humans, should be a clarion wake-up call to the entire world that tomorrow this, this particular flu virus could become the next pandemic and dwarf anything that we've seen in modern history. Second of all is it now does give us more information about how we might anticipate when another flu virus is moving towards becoming a pandemic strain. Are there markers in those viruses and we see them in animals?